Hey guys, Forrest here with Fofo Astro, and today is actually really exciting. Um, I have a couple little things here, a couple narrow band filters from Astronomic, uh, Sulfur 2 and Oxygen 3, and we are going to install them. So I uh, have wanted narrow band filters for probably like seven years since I started doing Astro, and now I finally get to do it. So we're going to put them in together. Let's do it. So it's uh, snowing outside, so I can't really open the roof for more light, so apologies on the lighting situation. Uh, but first thing we gotta do is pop the camera and the filter wheel off of the uh, scope, make sure we don't jostle anything, because everything's pre-aligned right now, and I don't wanna mess up my polar alignment or anything like that. So I'm gonna pop this off, we're gonna open it up, and then we're gonna get them swapped out. So one thing I had to make sure that I did was really crank down the clutch knob on this, and I really shouldn't be doing it this way. Um, I should have like lost the alignment, um, but I really cranked these clutches down, so hopefully nothing falls over. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and make this happen now. Here is the filter wheel. So we just need to undo one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little Allen screws, pop this whole bottom plate off, and then we'll be off to the races. So here we've got uh, luminance, red, green, blue, and hydrogen alpha. Um, the reason that they look very different is because they all have anti-reflective coatings on them. Uh, we can see the luminance filter is pretty clear. It's just a clear filter. So then we're gonna put uh, our oxygen three right here and our sulfur two right here. And we'll have our full set, which is super exciting. So uh, basically the filters are held in with these little uh, screws and washers. So there's basically a screw that goes in, or a bolt that goes in, and then there's a little uh, plastic washer that holds the edge of the filter. And you gotta be really careful when you put these in that you are centering the filter in the gap so that when you screw down that screw, it adequately holds it in there. Um, you also obviously wanna be careful of the control board and all the things like that. This is the Attic EFW3, um, which is a great filter wheel. It's worked out great for me. All right, here we go. So. Luminance, red, green, blue, H alpha, sulfur two, oxygen three, all in there. These first four are uh, Astrodon filters and then the next three are astronomic filters just cause, yeah. Those of you who've looked at filter prices will understand. <laughs> uh, but basically got everything screwed in there and now it's time to put the cover back on and put it back up and then we'll program Sequence Generator Pro to recognize it. All right, so here we are, you guys. Uh, this is my relay controller, not the one that I wrote, but the other one. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is just power up the filter wheel. So we're gonna turn that on. Um, I can hear the filter cycling right now, which is a good sign. It means it's actually activating and still working. So that's awesome. I'm also going to turn on my USB hub just to avoid any sort of connection issues. And then what we can do is open Sequence Generator Pro. Um, and in here, I just need to configure my filters just so that everything is um, done and I'm not needing to do any of this stuff when, I'm, uh, when I have clear skies and it's nighttime. Uh, I like to kind of do as much configuration here locally in the observatory as I can. Um, the one thing we talked about, if you guys haven't watched my setting up Sequence Generator Pro video, you should. Uh, but basically what we need to do is we need to go into our, it's under Tools and Equipment Profile Manager. And I'm going to grab my uh, profile that I have over here for my setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filters. I've got my Attic EFW filter driver here, and I'm going to go ahead and, and set up my filters. So you can see right now I have five filters turned on. Well, I just added six and seven. Six is a sulfur two. Seven is an oxygen three. Uh, for autofocus expose, obviously I don't know at this point. This is how long of an exposure it does for autofocusing. I'm going to assume 30 seconds is probably good. Uh, same as HA and uh, the other narrow band filter that I have. No idea whether that's correct. Um, we're just going to have to see whether that works or not when it actually is light outside. Um, the other thing is we have this absolute focus point position um, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it the same as I give all of my other filters so that it's super easy. Um, just keeps it simple. There are also options in here for um, different focus. Uh, basically you can have one filter focus with another filter um, which makes some sense if you have a narrow band filter which lets in very little light and you want to focus it with a, another colored filter, assuming that your filters are parfocal. Um, because I'm using Astrodon filters for LRGB and Astronomics for HAS2 and Oxygen3, 
I uh, can't really assume parfocal in this instance, so I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Um, there is a flats calibration wizard that I can run, but I need to run that when it's dark outside, because uh, even the little bit of light in the observatory right now falling on the flat panel affects how that works. So for right now, I'm just going to say OK. And now we're going to go ahead and be good for that, that whole setup. Um, later, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here and save this. Later, I'm going to have to go in um, and run the flats calibration wizard, I, or it's the flats wizard. Let me see. I think it's the flats calibration wizard. Yeah, I'm going to have to run the flats calibration wizard just to get my uh, brightnesses worked out for my flat box for those different uh, narrowband filters. I can probably assume that they're pretty close to my H alpha settings, but they might not be. So it's kind of an important thing to run that on a cloudy night when it's dark outside and I have the uh, the headroom to do it. So pretty easy setup, uh, basically just putting in the filters, telling the computer what those filters are. Um, obviously, whenever I'm done, I made sure I saved that profile. I'm then going to power off my filter wheel and power off my USB hub. And then I'm also going to power off my switch so that I'm not keeping anything else on that needs to be on. Um, just again, with solar power, have to be super um, super cautious of that. Also, one new thing that I added, this is my Arduino web server. This is all the code that I wrote and that I came up with. Um, I have switches for my Gemini, which is my scope controller, my uh, network switch relay, and then one for the NUC and the Skyroof. Um, right now, the NUC's not hooked up to it, obviously, because I'm using it, uh, but the Skyroof, it powers on and off. And then the router, this is my main router that gives me internet in the observatory. So I don't actually have a way to hard off that because that would remove my connection to the observatory. So instead it's a restart button and it just power cycles it. That way, just in case there's any sort of issue, I'm able to power cycle everything without having to worry about it. So hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys want to subscribe for more information, hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.